Hello. I was um just sitting here and I wanted to let's see if we can get that fixed. Just uh, to share with you a little bit about something that uh, the Lord was uh, had put on my heart because I got to really thinking about this. Um, you know how people allow themselves to to be in mental bondage, um, you know, to things of the past and 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 when I say things of the past, the things themselves that they can't forget, you know, that um, that they that they had done or that they do or uh, or something that may have been done to them, you know. And so what people allow themselves to do is to stay like bound up, uh, you know, in their mind. They really can't get free uh, to really serve the Lord or even believe the Lord for something. Um, and it's all because of, you know, what they've allowed themselves, you know, to to not only meditate on the reason they meditate on. And I'm talking about negative things. I'm not talking about things that, you know, will strengthen and encourage and give peace and joy and those kinds of things. I'm talking about something totally opposite to that. And really, you don't have to be that way. I mean, I mean, I'm talking about people who call themselves children of God. It really doesn't have to be that way. You know, um, you know, the Bible says that. And as I was um, uh, looking up some of this stuff, you know, the Bible says that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You know, so there's another scripture really that combats that one that says, you know, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure. And I think I wrote that scripture down and, uh, and we'll look at that, you know. But but the thing is, is that, you know, when we get saved, you know, the Bible tells us that in, in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that we are a new creature in Christ. We are new. Old things have passed away and all things have become new and all things are of God. You know, and the thing about it is, is that, you know, those things, you know, that God, those promises, uh that God has given us, you know, those promises, you know, uh, as to whether they are actually lived out depends on whether we believe what God said or not. And that's the biggest part of, you know, of, uh, of receiving anything from the Lord is believing what he said. Now, Paul talks about um, in, in, in Philippians, and, and, and I'll read that to you in a minute. In Philippians chapter uh Three, you know, he talks about we forget those things that are behind, you know, and a lot of people that I know, you know, they allow themselves to live a life of of fear, a life of doubt, a life of uh, unbelief, a life of of just, you know, not very much victory in their lives over anything. And the reason for that is because they have believed a lie. And when they repented of their sin, they didn't understand you know, the fact that if you're a new creature in Christ, then that old person that you used to be, that person is dead and, and, and neither does that person have any kind of uh, of authority over you whatsoever. Because now Jesus is supposed to be in control of your life. And so many people, you know, um, think that they have to hold on to, you know, all those bad experiences and those bad thoughts and, and all of that stuff, you know. Now, when I look at the life of Paul, you know, Paul was a man that uh, chased down believers, chased down, you know, folks that who trusted in the Lord, who were who confessed their faith in Jesus. I mean, he would he would chase them down. He would put them in prison. He would beat them up. And in some cases, they would even kill him, as was in the case of Stephen, um, you know, in the book of Acts, you know, because, you know, Stephen. He was uh, he was one of those brothers that that truly believed, you know, everything that Jesus said, and he had no problem calling people out on their sin and stuff. And so, as a result of that, you know, because of his faith and his boldness, and to believe and to preach what Jesus had taught them to preach and stuff, they stoned him to death because he called out, you know, the the religious people, and he, um, you know, not only called them out, but you know he you know, told them what they did, you know. And so these folks, they didn't like that too well. And as a result, they stoned him to death. And the person that led that, that, uh, that murder, literally is what it was, was the Apostle Paul. He was the one who led, who, uh, who, who led that, that murder of, uh, of Stephen. And, uh, but at that time, his name wasn't uh, Paul, it was Saul at the time. But yet he was a pain in the rear end for anybody who believed in Jesus. And he was going to do his darndest to make sure that he got rid of all of them or that he put them in prison or murdered them. Either one, it didn't really matter. 
Now, understand something about Paul, you know, as we read later on, you know, in the epistles, you know, the thing that he confessed out of his own mouth, he said, you know, he said, I did these things in ignorance. You know, I did them in ignorance. So, so what does that mean? He really didn't understand what, you know, what he was doing because he thought, you know, and, and Jesus said this, you know, that there would be people who would murder believers that would think that they're doing God's will. And this is what, this is what the case was, you know, with Paul, he thought by, you know, by, by harassing believers and, and chasing them down and imprisoning them and murdering them and stuff. He thought he was doing the Lord's will and stuff. And that's why, you know, he was so convicted in terms of doing it because he thought that's what God wanted him to do. Now think about how you can get something such as, a, and that was a deception, and he called it ignorance, but that was a deception where he thought that he was doing right, and in his mind, there was nothing wrong about what he was doing, see? And so, and so that's really how he had been shaped and molded, you know, in his belief, and not only in, in his belief, but in how he lived his life in that. And he was a very famous guy and very well-liked guy, and very popular guy, you know, with the religious people, the Pharisees and, and those kind of people and stuff. And, um, and so, but once when he was on the road to uh, Damascus, you know, in, um, I think it's around chapter eight or nine, somewhere in there in Acts. And, and when he was on his way to Damascus, the Lord, you know, spoke to him. And, and he said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And, and the one thing that I've tried to get people to understand is, you know, Paul didn't, um, Jesus didn't say, why are you persecuting the, the, the believers? He said, why are you persecuting me? And what that should tell you is that that's how Jesus is with those who are his. He are one, he's one with them. So the pains and the sufferings and the things that we feel, Jesus feels those same things. Why? He has made himself to be one with us, see? And so and that's why he said to Paul, why are you persecuting me? Because literally what he said is, if you're persecuting my people or those who are my disciples and those who are following me, he says, you're persecuting me. And, uh, and so uh, Paul said, who art thou, Lord? And so Jesus explained to him who he was. He said, I'm the one you persecuting and all. And, um, and so, you know, to make a long story short, you know, Paul was blinded. You know, he fell to the ground. He was blinded, and you know, and he and, and he literally repented of what he had been doing. See, and and the one thing I want you to understand is that when you are sometimes being taught and told to do certain things by men, then what you need to understand is many times, you know, if these folks have a personal uh, goal or a personal agenda, so to speak then that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to always tell you the truth. Now, but when Jesus showed up on the scene and when he spoke to Paul and he explained some things to Paul, you know, and, and, and the fact that Paul was, that Jesus called, he said, look, I got, and basically was, I got plans for him and stuff. You know, I got plans for Paul, you know, to, to serve me and to, and to change the lives of so many people simply by preaching the gospel and doing the same things, you know, that Jesus did when he walked on the earth. And so when Paul went to uh, Ananias, you know, because Jesus told him where to go and he had told Ananias, you know, you know, uh, that uh, what he wanted him to do once he got to where Paul was, wanted him to, uh, to lay hands on him so that he could receive his sight, receive his sight. But not only that, he got filled with the Holy Spirit. Now you think about, uh, and I don't really know the age of Paul at that time, but think about this. Think about how long Paul had been believing that lie. And then all of a sudden, Jesus is basically telling him that that's what you've been doing. You have been believing a lie. Now, you, you would have thought that it would have been really, really, really hard for Paul to transition from a false doctrine or false belief to one where he's believing the truth as spoken to him by the Son of God. And, you know, and you would have thought that he may have wrestled with that, you know. But once Paul knew the truth, and he knew that he had heard Jesus and yet had received from the Lord, 
instruction and, and forgiveness and deliverance from that mindset and stuff. Paul went on about God's business from that day forward. You know, he never went back to doing those things that he that he did um, uh, prior to meeting Jesus. Uh, he completely and totally changed. You don't find anywhere in scripture where he even had any kind of thought about going back and doing that. Because when when Paul, when Jesus met Paul on the road to Damascus and changed his life, then Paul received that deliverance, that healing, that forgiveness, you know, uh, at the time when Jesus told him that and stuff. Now, here's a problem with a lot of people. You know, they can't forget a lot of stuff that they, they, they think that certain sins that they had was so bad that God cannot forgive them. That's not true. That's not true. Now, Paul was a murderer and God not only forgave him, but God used him mightily. And why is that? When God forgives us, the Bible says he remembers our sin no more. We are a new creature in Christ Jesus. And Paul took God at his word, see, that he was new and that he didn't have to have to uh, uh, have to worry and have to bind himself you know, uh, in sin because of something that he did, you know, and, and, and that he did before he met the Lord. See, this is what you all need to understand. When Jesus comes into your life, everything changes, everything. Now that change will only take place when you believe what God has said or what Jesus has done, and you accept that at face value. You don't have to go find out from anybody else whether it's true or not. If you have a book, if you have a Bible, just go in your Bible, you look in your Bible and you read what the Bible says about who Jesus is, what he's done and why he did it. See, the Bible says that Jesus, Jesus said himself, he said, you know, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the gospel, to set captives free, to set at liberty them who are bound. So he came to minister and completely turn around the sinner from their sin and from their um, sentence of eternal damnation, see? And when Jesus comes into your life, as I said, everything changes in your life. Everything changes in your life. But the thing is, is that, you know, if there is no belief when you repent of your sin, if there's no belief in that repentance, then nothing's going to change because Jesus has to have full cooperation on our part and full acceptance of everything that he said, that he stood for and what he represents. We have to accept all of that. See now. So Paul accepted whatever, well, everything that Jesus told him, you know, he, Jesus even said, you know, I mean, as he said many times, you're going to suffer in the same sufferings in which I suffered. You're going to be persecuted. You're going to be hated and all of these things. So, so I don't understand why when believers experience these things, they start whining and crying out like a doggone greased pig or something, you know, and somebody's beating them upside the head with a doggone bat or something, you know, because the thing is, is that, you know, if you are a child of God, then you're going to expect, expect to be persecuted, expect to be hated, expect to be ridiculed, expect to be called all kinds of names or whatever and stuff, you know, <clears throat> and you expect that stuff because that's what Jesus said was going to happen. But it doesn't happen to people who are not faithful to the Lord. It only happens to those people who believe every word of God and live by that. So, so Paul decided he was going to live his life for Jesus, and he was not going to allow his mind to take him back to a time before he met the Lord. You know, the Bible says that, you know, once we are born again, you know, old things have passed away and all things have become new and all things are of God. That means that when Jesus comes into our life, we have the faith of God. When Jesus comes into our lives, then we believe every word that proceeded forth out of the mouth of God. And the Bible says that I have control over every part of my life through Christ Jesus, every part of it. See, I choose what I want to think. I choose what I want to say. I choose what I want to do. Now, 
if I'm truly a disciple of Jesus and I'm following Jesus, then, you know, what am I going to think on? The things above, not things on this earth. I'm going to meditate on the word of God day and night. I'm going to look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of my faith, and I'm not going to give any place to the devil, see? Because we've been commanded to do that, and if, if we didn't have to be warned about that thing, then, you know, then that would tell you that we don't have to worry about the devil, you know, uh, uh, trying to tempt us and test us and try us and all because he's going to be doing all of that. The Bible says he goes to and forth upon the earth seeking whom we may devour. So, you know, the, but my main point is, 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 is when you look at the life of Paul, from the time Paul met Jesus, he was nothing like the Paul prior to Jesus. And that's the same thing. It is the same way it should be with us. And why was it that way? Because Paul did not allow himself to go back and to think back. He understood that God had delivered him and his life was now in Christ Jesus. And so he, would, so he was from that point on to do the will of God, just as we are. Now, in, 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 in uh, the scripture I said I was going to share with you in, 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 in Philippians, you know, and it was and it's, it's a, a, a book that Paul wrote. It's an epistle that Paul wrote. And in, in, in Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, this is what Paul said. He said, brethren, I count not myself to apprehend it, but this one thing I do, forgetting, not remembering, forgetting, those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. How? In Christ Jesus. Paul said, I'm forgetting all of that stuff back there, man, before I met the Lord. He said, I'm not meditating on that stuff. I'm not worried about that stuff. And that's the biggest problem in the life of most people. They cannot forget that old life that they used to live. They, and, and the Bible says you got to forget everything. And see, if, if, if in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says that, you know, all things are of God, then, you know, all things should be of God. The way I think, the way I talk, the way I, uh, the, the things I see and what I do, all should be, you know, directed and led by the Holy Spirit of God. And I answer those things, those 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 uh, commandments and stuff by saying yes, 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 yes. I'm going to obey God in all of those things. See, and when I'm tempted with something, you know, if I know who I am in the Lord, I'm not going to let that stuff not going to bog me down, man. You know, there's a scripture that says, "Casting all your care upon Him, for He cares for you." Because see, when we get saved, we allow Jesus Christ to be the Lord of our lives. See, the Lord of our lives. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are worthy of all praise, so whatever things are of a good report, those are the things when I'm in Jesus that I think about. Because if I think about on the things of the world, then what's going to happen? Eventually, I'm going to go back to doing that which I was doing in the world thinking the way that the world thinks, all defeated about everything every day of my life, as opposed to realizing that, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, and that with God, nothing is impossible. So I strengthen my relationship with the Lord. I strengthen my faith in God by reading and, and believing his word. And so now I can walk with the Lord so that now I can actually truly cast my care upon him because Jesus says, I care for you. And, and I allow Jesus to be Lord over whatever situation or circumstance in my life because that's what he told me to do. You know, I shouldn't be worried about anything because God is not a God of worry. God is a God of peace. God is a God of joy. God is a God of love. God is a God that, 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 that have gives me a peace that goes beyond all understanding and stuff. Because the life that I now live in Jesus is totally a life of faith. And the Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. See, and so, you know, Paul didn't know what to expect. You know, he had been living that life, you know, of sin and a light of really of hate because the dude hated, hated doggone folks that believed in Jesus. See, but now he took that same uh, attitude in a sense or that same commitment to doing to what he had been doing, and he took that and he put it in, put his energy in doing those things that a believer would do 
um, now that they are children of God and servants of the Most High, you know, and that Jesus was their Lord. That's what he was concerned about doing. He said, so look, he said, I'm not remembering none of that stuff. And, you know, and it's a, it's a shame sometimes that people, you know, they don't want you to forget that stuff because, see, a person that's not walking with God, and if they know that there was something in your past that they could use against you to keep you in bondage to them, they're not going to try to help you to, to become the person in, in Christ that you need to be. That's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 that you need to separate yourself from those kind of people. He says unrighteous people, you know, have nothing in common with righteous people, those people who are of God. And that's why you have to separate from them. And you know, see, because it's a whole lot easier to separate yourself from your evil, demonic, sinful thoughts if you're listening to Jesus, as opposed to you got a child of the devil, uh, a child of uh, yeah, the devil who's a, who represents everything about the devil, trying to keep you in bondage to the stuff that God says, I've delivered you from that. See, you know, that's why it's important that you separate yourself you know, from people that don't believe in the word of God and who do not have a relationship with Jesus. There's nothing they can do to help you all because they do not have the spirit of God living in them. Now, the one thing that every believer, every true believer has in common with one another is they have the spirit of God living in them. So we have everything in common. We have the same Lord. We have the same Savior. We have the same God and Father. We believe in the same word. So yeah, we can have some fellowship together. Because if, if a person is truly your brother or your sister in Christ, look, man, when you start uh, uh, um, thinking stinking things or whatever, you know, they're going to encourage you, man, that look, you don't have to think like that. You're a new creature in Christ. creature in Christ. God has made you new, see? And the problem that a lot of you have by not you know, getting rid of that doubtful and stinking thinking. And, and really, it's, 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 it's unbelief. It's what it boils down to. You know, and the children of Israel could not enter the promised land because of unbelief. See, to believe God, we're going to have to trust God. See, and trusting God is simply having confidence in everything that God has said. See, and if you believe what it says in Proverbs, trusting in the Lord with all of your heart and leaning not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledging him and he will direct your path. God will take control of your life if you allow him to. And think about the way your life used to be. Uh, you know, I mean, you haven't grasped full control of it yet. You know, and, and really, you know, that's not God's problem. God has made everything available to us that pertains to life and godliness. And some of us have accepted all of that and received all of that. And as a result of that, you know, we're able to trust the Lord and we're able to live a life in Christ where we can be a witness and a testimony to other people. And the old man that we, old man, woman or whatever that we used to be, we're not that person anymore because God has delivered us from that. And the Bible says that that person is dead, see? But you can resurrect the dead, you know, in that stuff in your life, you know, if you truly want to. Paul chose not to do that because Paul lived a life that was completely and totally surrendered to God. He served God in such a way that he was one of the most powerful uh, 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 ministers of the gospel, you know, that there ever was. There was no shame in him for his commitment to the Lord Jesus. There was no uh, apologizing to anybody for the things that he believed, you know, when it came to the Lord and came to doing the Lord's will. See, you know, today we have so much religion and so much trash in church that people really don't know the truth. See, because Jesus said, if you know the truth, then the truth will set you free or make you free. See, and, and really, and really, you know, the 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 biggest. The biggest thing that I see, you know, in, in, in having that um, kind of unbelief and doubting and all of that is because um, it's not that truth has taken over in the church. It's just that men have decided to use religious doctrine in order to control what goes on in the church and control really the people in the church. And where God is really not in charge, see? And the thing about it is if God does not have full control, 
you know, in any fellowship, and even if he doesn't have full control in your life, God is not going to be hanging around and stuff. God is looking for people that are going to trust him, going to believe him, and going to live their life for him. Because it's important that we live the life that God has called us to live before men, that others might be saved. And through the light that we allow of Jesus to manifest in our lives, then people can see Jesus in us, and Jesus will get the glory and not us. See, And we help people to understand that having faith in man means absolutely nothing. Our faith must be in the Lord, and we must trust in the Lord with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And so if we're going to be able to keep our mind or have our mind set free from bad thoughts, from uh, evil thoughts, from doubting thoughts, from unbelieving thoughts or whatever, then you know we're going to have to forget that stuff. And it shouldn't be that hard if we sincerely meant what we said when we repented of our sin. See, it shouldn't be that hard because once you give your life to Jesus, everything about your life should change at that very moment. Everything. Now, look at this woman over in uh, the ninth chapter of Matthew. Um, and I will just I'll read it and then, uh, then we'll talk about it for a minute. It says in verse 20, it says, and behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment, talking about Jesus. For she said within herself, she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be healed. Now, think about this in another one of the gospels. It talks about this same woman. But it also said that she had spent everything that she had, you know, trying to be healed of this issue of blood. And the Bible says she had, I think, for like 12 years. Uh, yeah, about 12 years she had this disease. Now, you think about the mental anguish that this woman probably went through, you know, having to go to every different doctor, every different clinic every different anything that she could go to to try to get healed of this disease, see? And think about how that had to weigh on her, you know, and then people taking all of her money and all of this, and still she got, you know, the Bible, in one scripture says she, not, she didn't get better, she actually got worse, see? And so, you know, here this lady is, you know, could have all kinds, I mean, could have bound herself up in so, in so much, uh, fear and so much doubt, you know, and the woe is me. Ain't nobody, can't nobody do nothing for me. Ain't nothing nobody can do to help me. I've been to all the doctors. I've been to all the best doctors and all of this stuff, and they can't do anything for me. And so I don't know what I'm going to do in all of that. You don't read in the book, in the Bible where she was going through all of that, you know, because this is what I think. I think Jesus, you know, the Bible talked about when Jesus did a healing or cast out a devil from somebody, the Bible says that everybody started spreading his name everywhere and talking about this Jesus and stuff. And so I guarantee you this woman got wind of that and she started asking questions. Okay, well, who is this man? You know, and then she meets this one guy who said, oh man, yeah, you know, I was, you know, Two days ago, I was laying on this bed. I was a pair, uh, a paralyzed. I couldn't move anything, but hey, look at me now, see? And it's all because of Jesus, see? It's all because of what he did for me, you know? And he said that my faith was the reason that I got healed, see? And so the thing is, is that, see, this woman had been meditating on this because she said, look, you know, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, she said, I'm going to be healed, see? And that was the kind of power and the kind of authority, you know, that Jesus manifested, which he had been given from God in the first place, see? And, and he went about doing God's business and stuff, you know, healing people. And the thing about it is, you know, when I read the, the, the epistles and stuff, man, there were a lot of people who were sick. There were a lot of people who needed healing. There were a lot of people who were possessed of devils and all of that stuff. I mean, there were a lot of people just bound up and stuff, see? But when Jesus came and Jesus offered, you know, not just relief, he offered deliverance. He offered healing. He offered a new life. He offered a new 
uh, away in, 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 uh, through him and stuff, see, by repenting of our sins and accepting him as our Lord and as our Savior. Because what Jesus said is that if you don't believe in him, he says, you're condemned already. You're condemned already. Now, I don't know what this woman's uh, relationship or her faith was before, you know, this happened other than the fact that you have to go by what she said out of her mouth. She said, and, and the Bible tells us that she said this within herself. So she had been meditating on this stuff. And I can promise you, I don't care where G if she had to saw through a mountain to get to Jesus, she was going to get to Jesus because she had a very high hope of expectation. And I believe all because of the things and the testimonies that she had heard and that she had seen from other people who have who had an encounter with Jesus and stuff. And she said, if I would just touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. So what is she saying there? She said, we got to have some faith. You know, we've got to have faith that we believe, if we believe, not only believe, but if we expect to get anything from God. And the Bible tells us that faith, you know, uh, without faith, it is impossible to please God. It is impossible. And not only that, Paul said in Romans, the just shall live by faith. Those who are in Christ Jesus must live by faith. Why? Without faith, it's impossible to please him. See? So the thing is, is that when God tells you something, when he, whether it's a command or whether it's a promise or whatever, you know, if he tells you something, you got to believe that. See? See, we got too many people who are wanting a manifestation from God for a manifestation from God immediately. And that doesn't happen all the time, immediately. There were 10 uh, 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 lepers that were healed. And the Bible says that as they went, they were healed, and only one of them came back, you know, and really glorified Jesus and thanked him, you know, and worshiped at his feet. See? So it's amazing a lot of times, you know, how even people ask something from God, and then God, because of his sovereignty, um, you know, answers their prayer, but they never give him the glory and stuff. See, but I can tell you what, I guarantee this woman was, see, in John chapter nine, I mean, in Matthew chapter nine, she says, she said within a second, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole, and the woman was made whole from that hour. See, she was made whole for good, for completely whole for good. See, and the thing is, is that, is that she was made whole. Why? All because she believed what Jesus said, and she had already prepared her heart to receive from him, all because she had been meditating on that, and she had believed it in her heart, that if she could just touch his garment, you know, that she would be healed. Now, see, the same thing happens you know, with any other kind of healing that you need from God. See, this lady needed a physical healing, but I also believe that she also was healed of stinking thinking as well because she had every opportunity to not believe Jesus, but she chose to believe him anyway. She didn't make any kind of excuses. You didn't hear her talking about any kind of excuses. Everybody in their grandmama got an excuse when they don't have faith. You know, when they don't get something whenever they want it and all. And the thing about it is they always worry about and think about, you know, what could have been, why it didn't happen, you know, and nobody's going to do anything for me and all of this stuff, you know, that that, that crying towel kind of mentality. Um, you know, but the thing is, is that, you know, with this woman, she just believed what Jesus said and she accepted it. And Paul also, as I said in Romans, I mean, in Philippians chapter three, you know, the, the Bible says that says that um, uh, we have to forget those things that are behind. And if you're a new creature, you got to forget those things because if you don't, you're not going to walk in new cre in a new creation mentality. You know, it's going to be hard for you to think on things of God. It's going to be hard for you to trust in the Lord, you know, and to have faith that God would do what he says he's going to do. If you don't forget, you know, that the person you once were before you surrendered or committed your life to Jesus by repenting, first of all, then if you don't forget all of that stuff, because see, the thing about it is, if you really want it gone, God will wipe it away. 
That's what happened to me. When I got saved, you know, all of that old man, old nature, old thinking, it left. I mean, it left quicker than a twinkling of an eye. See, and things in our life will change, you know, sometimes some things more quickly than others. And it's all because we believe in God and we trust in the Lord and we have faith in him that he will actually do what he said he would do. Um, and I can honestly testify to that. Uh, over a 40 year period of time, you have a lot of uh, opportunity, you know, to, to fail, a lot of opportunity for God to even fail for that matter. But God has never not one time failed in anything that he's promised and that he's told me, uh, uh, and even my wife for that matter. Because the, the, the biggest thing is to have faith in God. And you cannot have faith in God if you don't forget you know, the old person, forget those things that are behind. Paul said, you know, he uh, he said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We can't do anything on our own or by ourselves. Jesus said that himself. I can do nothing of myself. See, what I see the father do, that's what I do. That's what he said. And we have to believe the same thing. You know, we have to believe like Jesus believed um, because you know, once we become the children of God and once we become disciples of Christ, that's what we believe. Everything that God said, everything that's in this word, everything. We can't omit anything. See, but a lot of y'all, you know, you really have got to forget those things. Forget your past. Forget those folks that are in your past that caused you pain and caused you heartache and stuff. Don't let those people control you simply by what they have said to you at some point to have you to be bound up in some kind of thought or some kind of sin and stuff. See, you don't let people do that to you. God is not going to do it to you, you know, so why should you let somebody else do it to you? See, you know, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. You know, everything that we need to have done and every doggone, uh, every doggone uh, 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 deliverance, healing, whatever we need, God is able to do that because in scripture, he's proven that he's able to do that. And he is no respect of person, see? You know, just like God healed this woman through Jesus, of course, when he healed this woman with the issue of blood, God is no different. You know, he will do the same thing for us. But we've been told, you know, that healings have passed away. You know, well, this stuff just don't happen today or whatever. No, it's not going to happen. I mean, if there's no faith, you know, it's not going to happen. If there's no belief in God and trust in God, no, it's not going to happen. See, but see, a lot of people allow themselves to be robbed from the blessings of God all because they believe some junk here. Look, you can't believe every preacher that you listen to because Jesus said there'll be false Christ and false prophets and Peter said there'll be false preachers and false teachers. So you can't really believe everything that you hear coming out the pulpit. See, yeah, and we've talked about this so many times in our, in 2 Corinthians, you know, in chapter, uh, I think it's chapter 11, you know, where the Bible talks about, you know, the devil's ministers, his ministers transforming themselves into apostles of light and that the devil himself transformed himself into, uh, uh, um, into a, an angel of light, see? So, so these things, you know, you need to know and you need to discern and you can't do it if you don't stay in the word of God and stay close to Jesus, you know, um, because there are going to be more people who will try to convince you that the things of God, certain things of God have passed away. They try to convince you that, that they have passed away, you know, and, and really they have not passed away, you know, and stuff. You know, and like I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm <laughs> and I'm, I'm talking to you, but I'm, I'm looking at uh, something that a uh, one of my friends and a teammate posted on here um, uh, that I played ball with back in with in Toronto um, back in the, in the eighties uh, with uh, Joey McLaughlin. You know, we were good friends when we played, and actually have contacted each other. You know, I mean, not every day, but you know, um, at different times and stuff. And he says, amen, that thy faith has made me whole. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, and that's the whole thing about it. Having that faith in Jesus, you know, and believing what the Lord said and standing on that. 
See, that's what this woman did. You know, I don't care who came to that woman. I guarantee you that woman was not going to get off because her mind and her heart was made up. And see, and this is the thing. Eventually, what you're thinking on in your mind, it's going to eventually make its way down here into your heart if you think on it long enough. If you have faith and you and you meditate on that faith, the Bible says to meditate on the word of God day and night. And what does the Bible say? How we get faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. See, so everything that is good for you and that can change your life and that, you know, that can make you whole, like Joey said, that can make you whole. It all comes from God. See? How many of y'all done tried doctors? You done tried psychiatry? You done tried psychology? You done tried your best friend? You done tried your preacher? You done tried your deacon? You done tried your bishop? And nothing has changed. See? Nothing has changed. Why? God tells you not to put confidence in a man. See? We are to seek first the kingdom of God, meaning that we put our faith in Jesus. See? We trust in the Lord. The Bible says that that when we call upon the Lord, the Jesus said himself, he said, before you call, I will answer. See? So don't allow yourself to be rejected by men and let that form a mentality of defeat because God never said that he was going to do anything uh, or have a man rather do something that he got credit for that he couldn't do. See? And see, the thing about it is when we trust God to do it and God actually finally does it, then, you know, the whole thing is to help people to turn to the Lord and to trust in God. And really, you know, and it's all about our lives, complete and totally our lives, all parts of it. See, even the part where, you know, we were, we were doubting and we were unbelieving. And then, man, I turned back to the Lord and I started trusting God and putting my faith in God and stopped listening to man and only listening to the voice of the Lord. Because Jesus said, him who hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying, not what man is saying. See, what the Spirit is saying. And so this woman, you know, she had closed off all crap from coming into her ears. See, and the same thing happened to Paul because the you know when paul gave his life to jesus see the very places that he had been to arrest believers you know and to imprison believers and to murder believers those were the same places that he was going to have to go back a different man with a different message you know and the message was going to be i'm worshiping and serving that same guy that i told everybody else prior to meeting jesus on the road to damascus you know, that was not, uh, it was not God's son at all. See, so he had to go back to all of those places and, and all of those people, you know, that saw him, you know, the way he mistreated the believers, the Christians and stuff, the believers rather. Um, then, you know, he had to go back and say, well, no, I'm preaching something else now. See, but you never heard Paul apologize once he went back. You know, if anything, he put on his hobnail boots, man. And he walked all over the back of all those religious people because the truth that he told them was the same truth that Jesus preached. And what did what happened when Jesus preached the truth? He exposed all of that crap. And not only that, he called them out. You know, and I tell people all the time, they go, well, you can't judge. Now, read the 23rd chapter of Matthew and see how much judgment Jesus did. See, by calling out those religious people, those people that held other people in bondage to them and stuff. But Paul never apologized for serving the Lord, see? And, and, and you know, and the Bible talks about it in, the, in a parable where when the soul of souls are work, he says some folk are gonna walk away from the truth because of the word's sake. They're gonna be so ridiculed by people, they're gonna deny the word of God, you know, and walk away from it, you know? You know, in, first, in the first Timothy, it says in the last days that some will depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. See, so you cannot, you cannot have a, 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 a strong faith, an unwavering faith, if you're not walking with the Lord on a daily basis and believing what he says on a daily basis and getting in the word of God on a daily basis. See, because you have to strengthen your heart, your mind, and your relationship with Jesus by the word and by the spirit of God. 
And you cannot do that by having a minimal relationship, see, with somebody. I guarantee you that your husband or your wife wouldn't accept a minimal relationship from you with them. And we're talking about the son of God. We're talking about God, the father, the creator of everything, see. And we're going to treat them worse than we treat our husband and our wife, see. The thing about it is, is that the, the closer you draw, you know, you, you, you draw to God, the Bible says the closer he will draw to you. And the closer you draw to the Lord, you will realize how much you missed the relationship with God because the relationship will manifest itself as we continue to walk with the Lord as being a whole lot better than you ever thought. See, the relationship with God is never going to be um, um, as good as some people try to make it out to be. It's going to be better. Because you're experiencing it one-on-one -on -one with the Lord yourself, see? So that relationship will get better, and you will know the Lord a whole lot better, you know, once you spend time with him yourself. I can promise you that. So the thing you need to do, you need to forget your old life, see, which you, sh which you should have once you got saved. Because God loves you more than you can ever know. God loves you more than you can ever think. God loves you more than you can ever dream of and stuff. And the thing, don't don't take somebody's word for something when they tell you, oh, well, God ain't going to forgive you for that. Well, you know, God can't forgive you for that or whatever. How do they know? How do they know? Tell me, give you a chapter of verse for that. That there's a sin other than the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit that you will not be forgiven of. Every sin that we've committed and that men commit can be forgiven of and will be forgiven of if it is repented of in sincerity. If you're serious about your repentance, God will forgive you. See, and not only that, he ain't going to throw it up in your face. He's not going to throw your sin up in your face. He will tell you you need to repent. See, even with the woman that had, um, that was caught in adultery, I think in the eighth chapter of John, when she was caught in adultery, Jesus told her just, he said, to go and sin no more. See, he didn't say you doggone low down, low life adulteress and stuff. He didn't say none of that. He told you, you can't go back and do what you were doing anymore. He said, cause it's going to be worse. So he said, sin no more. And he said, where are thine accusers? And see, it spoke volumes, I guarantee you, to that woman that was caught in that sin because he didn't ridicule her. And he didn't beat her up about it, see? You go to some churches now, man, they're going to be telling you, well, you shouldn't have done that in the first place and all of that. That ain't why the people came to you, God. I mean, came to you as a representative of God. They came to you to share with them God's grace, God's mercy, and God's forgiveness, see? They didn't come there for you to beat them up. And we got preachers beat up people in church every Sunday, see? Every Sunday. Because they think they have all this power you know, to tell people whatever they want to tell them, all because they're the man, they're the one in charge and so forth, see? But that doesn't fly too well with the Lord and stuff, see? So the, 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 the thing that you have to do is that you have to separate yourself from the world so that you don't, don't have to hear all that doubt and that unbelief. People in the world, you know, who are of the world, rather, they don't give a rip about God. You know, all they're concerned about what they're doing and stuff. But if you trust in the Lord, if you forget about those things that are behind, if you look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finish of your, of your faith, and you sincerely want to be delivered from whatever in all, give your life to Jesus. Trust in him with your whole heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. See, in all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. You know, God is for you. He's not against you. And there are many of you, you know, I've, I've seen, you know, postings and I've seen um, things that you said in notifications on some of the things that I've written on, on Facebook and, and some of the things that I've preached on Facebook. You know, don't put your faith in a man. You put your faith in God. And if it means that you've got to separate yourself from some people that you've had a relationship with for a long time, you know, Jesus said you cannot love your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your uncle, your nephew, your niece, your best friend more than him. He said you got to hate them. 
And that's all he's saying, really. He's not saying, like, hate, hate, hate them. He's saying you've got to uh, not love them more than you love me, see? And you're going to have to make a choice. Everybody that hears me, you're going to, we're all going to have to make a choice. I've already made mine. You know, I'm not, I'm not substituting my relationship or giving away my life uh, in Jesus for anybody. I mean, not even family members. You know, uh, I've shared that before on here. You know, I don't, I don't really, you know, if I have family members, which I do, that want to act like jugheads, want to be more religious, you know, in church on Sundays and throwing their arms up so high, I swear, you know, that you can see every hair up underneath their armpit, see? You know, and but then the rest of the week, even at church and even probably sometime doing in church, talking about people like a dog, causing division in the body, causing division in families and stuff like that. You know, uh, uh I'm not having anything to do with that. You know, that's not family. Honestly, it's not family at all. And a lot of y'all put up with that stuff all because they are family. Blood is thick in the water. At least I know in the black neighborhood, the black community and stuff. That's what people say. But, you know, I don't care if you're green, yellow, purple, pink, or whatever. That crap don't fly with God. See, it doesn't fly with God. All God is interested in is saving your soul and leading and guiding you by the Holy Spirit, you know, so that you can become his child, his disciple, and live that way. And through living that way, be a witness and a testimony to other people um, who are not saved. You know, when the Bible tells us in First John to come out from the world, all that is in the world, it's the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And all those things and all those kinds of people that I just mentioned, they affect what you think if you don't get away from them, see? And they're not going to cause you to think on things above. They're not going to cause you to have good thoughts and thoughts that are healthy and wholesome and holy and righteous and none of that. Those kind of people are not going to not going to help you to do that, see? Some of y'all, sometimes you can have a, I mean, you can be having a great day, you know, in your relationship with God. And then you go visit some of your unsaved demonic family members and you just, you lose all the, you lose all the peace that you ever had or whatever. So why subject yourself to that when you know, usually every time you go visit them, that's what happened. See, so to me, that's not real smart. You know, it's just like, okay, I know I'm going in the devil's den. You know, even though I don't have to, well, I'm going to have to because they family. I don't feel like that. If a person is a doggone knucklehead and uh, troublemaker and all of this stuff, I'm not wasting my time with them. I don't care who they are. I really don't. I don't care who they are. Mama, daddy, brother, sisters, or whatever. Mm -mm. I'm not doing that. You know, because first of all, my relationship with God is more important to me than any of them. And, and having godly peace as well is more important than anything. I don't need to have, have my mind having to go places that I don't really want to go anyway. And being, you know, just with that temptation all because of the company that I keep. See, you know, if the Bible tells us not to have fellowship with those kind of people, then why do we? Because if you think on something long enough, like I said, it's gonna get down in your heart. And then the longer you hold on to it, eventually it's gonna manifest itself. You're going to blow up at somebody. You're going to do something that you really wished uh, that you hadn't done and stuff. So if you know that you got a bad situation and you're not, uh, and it's not a mandatory um, thing or place that you have to be or that you have to go, then why go there? Why go there? See, you know, a lot of you complain about, you know, all of the struggles you have or whatever, but you go around those same kind of people every day, all because they're family or they're relatives or they're your brother or they're your son or somebody that's a friend of yours or whatever. See, you know, the Bible says choose whom you're going to serve. And if you serve, if you choose to serve the Lord, you can't have those kind of relationships. Can't have them at all. And if you want to have the peace of God, you'll get away from them as fast as you can. You'll start forgetting. And, 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 and I, I promise you, the kind of people that will, that cause you to have all of these, have this turmoil going on in your head and stuff, you get away from those people and see what kind of peace that you have. See, because God, it's easier for God to minister to you now because you don't, he don't have to fight all this other crap you got up in your head anymore because the people that influence that, they're no longer a part of your life. And now that they're no longer part of your life, 
man, I can think, I can think free now. You know, I can think on the things of God. I can build my relationship with God. See, see, it's sad when we allow people to influence our relationship with God in a bad way. When we really don't have to. If we just do what God commanded and separate ourselves from him. See, so, 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 you know, the friends that you keep, the relationship that you have, they're going to either be good or bad for you. And when you base it on the word of God, you'll be able to identify the ones you need to get rid of and the ones you can maintain. But if it's people that are of the world and in the world, you can't really maintain any of them, really, to tell you the truth. Uh, but that's a choice that you have to make. So God bless you. And then Lord willing, I will fellowship with you all on a, a message on uh, on Sunday. If the Lord will have a good day and I will be playing some, uh, doing some watch party videos here in a little bit. God bless you. Love y'all. Love you, Joey.